Okay, here we go. Another episode of the Typical Skeptic Podcast. I have another fascinating guest with me back today. This is the third time he's been on my show. I have with me uh, Vaughn Brashler, and he's got an exciting new thing out. He's got um, the, these past life scrolls. It's a book. It's a book, but let me let me show it in the camera. Let me I'll, okay, maybe I can show it like that. Like that's sideways actually. So it's it's more like this if I zoom out. And I'm gonna actually open this today on um, on the show, which is gonna be exciting. Like I haven't opened it yet because it's so nice. But there's a, a, amazing information in here. The book is the scroll. That's what we're gonna get into today. All the information from the book is on these scrolls, and it's on past lives and reincarnation. And let me just read you the back. It says, the first scroll is an innovative series that takes modern readers to learn the ancients, examines past lives, not only the fact that we have all lived before, but also that we will live again. Um, you explore key evidence from clinical studies and case histories of people who remember past lives with their remarkable clarity and accuracy. Um, and then on the side, it says, for those interested in knowing who they have been so they can understand better who they are, and on the other side, it says, explore evidence and implications of past lives by reviewing case studies, clinical research, near-death experiences, shamanic and yoga meditation techniques, and more. So this is amazing. And we're going to do like an unboxing today on this. So you guys, that'll be exciting. We'll do that maybe towards the end of the podcast or the middle. But more about my guest, Vaughn Brasher is the author of a dozen books on developing consciousness and spiritual evolution. He's written about dreams, ghosts, energy healing or psychic and spiritual connection to pets, life transition, and time. He has, in fact, written four books on time and time travel, and the newest being, his newest was Mysterious Messages from Beyond and Time Shifts. Um, Vaughn is a former award-winning journalist from the Pacific Northwest. He has served on the faculty of the Omega Institute and Holistic Studies in Rhinebeck, New York, and served in the staff of Theosophical Society's National Headquarters in Wheaton, Illinois. He's had workshops throughout the United States and the United Kingdom. He lives and works on a small rustic island in the San Juans off of the coast of Washington State. And I want to give him a big warm welcome to the show and thank him for coming back on. Vaughn, thank you for coming back on my show. How are you? Gosh, thank you, Rob. That's really nice. Um, I love being on the show, and, and I'm doing just great. Yeah. Um, well, it's nice that I can have you back on. I, I didn't know I'd be doing it this long. It's three years ago, and I, 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 when I first saw you on Whitley Strieber's Dreamland before yeah. the, I asked you to come on the show the first time when you when you were talking about time slips and what and that that was like I th I figured that's right up my alley. Because, uh, you know, and then I realized that you get into all this other stuff. Then we did, you came on for time slips. Then you came on from mysterious messages from beyond and now past lives. So um, what, 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 what caught your interest in past lives and what made you want to write about this? Well, um, I think I, like a lot of people, I have had glimpses into my own past lives. And, um, and I've explored them then in depth, having, having, you know, glimpsed into them. And then I've done this in various ways, uh, as we'll describe maybe in this interview. Uh, and, you know, they weren't glamorous. I wasn't Napoleon. <laughs> you know, I, I lived very normal, you know, humdrum lives. And it occurred, it occurred to me that if you really looked into the history of past lives uh, throughout the world and throughout different cultures, there are many, many people who believe in past lives, although not always it, uh, reincarnation the way you and I might think of it. Yeah, yeah. What, but what do you? What do people believe? What do you? What do you mean? Like, what do the different cultures say? Yeah. Okay. Well, well this is kind of curious because you know it goes all the way back. Uh, you know, we've had uh, a lot of dream work in from the ancients, like the Mesopotamians. The Egyptians, they had dream temples where they'd go and they like a spa and you'd have an attendant in a quiet room and you do dream work to to explore your 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 identity, who you are, where you've been, where you're going, uh, what the future holds for you. Uh, and and this this evolved into something the Egyptians did. 
you know, in Egyptian magic is so important to us even today. And the Greeks picked it up and then the Romans and the Tibetans. The Tibetan Buddhists actually have dream yoga to explore, you know, their identity. And there are the Samadhi mystics in India who actually train their young young ones to uh, to have these exotic dreams to explore beyond time and space and their identity always to explore the identity and then in our own native american shamanic cultures we have dream walkers and spirit walkers who go into like a trance to explore the past and the future and they see themselves and they're in and they see the future and then, you know, I mean, there's all kinds of things. And there have been research into past lives through um, near-death experiences. There have been serious books on, on even children who remember previous lives. You know, we have the example of Plato, all the way back to Plato. And he wrote the theory of recollection, from which we get the term a priori knowledge, where even children will be born with... Uh, uh, a strange um, a lang uh, knowledge of languages to which they've never been subjected and which they've never been taught or exposed to. People that can just walk up to a piano and play it or know music they've never heard before and can play it, you know. This is really amazing, you know. And and there are different differences in, in what people believe about the progression of souls. Uh, very different, you know, some believe that um, that you might come back maybe not as a person, but as a cow, <laughs> you know, or, or 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 an elephant, you know, it could be, you know, and the the and then we have we have a lot of research from psychology like Michael Newton and others, Journey of Souls and Destiny of Souls, where they've actually taken people all the way back to remember past lives, what it's like between lives. Um, the idea of group souls, um, uh, the idea of, of uh, hidden life, the, the oneness of all theory, that all, all, all of life is really interrelated, interdependent. Maybe there's just one soul, and we're just like sparks of one, di one eternal divine flame, you know? So there's all these, you know, you, you look at the Tibetan Book of the Dead, for instance, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, Liberation Through Hearing, uh, that is to explore uh, the, the, the intermediate states between two physical lives, knowing that people will die a physical death, but, the, but understanding, understanding as they do that they're going to go forward, progress into a new life, and they, they then explore different levels of, uh, of consciousness, and, 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 and they, they actually practice this. And then we have the Egyptian Book of the Dead, which is actually preparing people with uh, almost like a, a, a journal that they carry with them, you know, into the next life. So they have some like, oh, continuity. So there's, there's just all kinds of people who believe, and, and even people who say they don't believe in, 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 in reincarnation, like... Um, for a religious reason or another, they prefer to believe that you die and you go to heaven or you die and you go to paradise or you die, you go to, or you, you ascend to another level of a being like nirvana, you know, then, I mean, that too is another life. So they look back on this life and that is their past life. So most everybody seems to believe, almost everybody seems to believe in a progression of the soul or the spirit advancing into another existence. Do you think it's the Buddhist that's, or is it the Buddhist that's, they call it samsara? Do you think, I've heard people say that like, we want to try to escape samsara, like that reincarnation could be a bad thing. Do you, seem, come, do you think some cultures look at reincarnation as a bad thing or that, we, or that we're on some kind of like, I don't know if you've heard this. I'm sure you've heard this before. It's it's yeah. pretty big. I mean, they're like we're in some like prison planet or something. What are your thoughts yeah. on that? It, it, it just well, you know, I mean, you want you want to escape. I mean, you want to escape the wheel of destiny, as they say, the wheel of life. You know, the, the the idea that you become liberated by becoming aware 
and, and end this, this suffering that we go through because life is difficult as we experience it in a physical sense here. I mean, in the here and now, it is beautiful, it is eventful, it is just full of ups and downs, but it's a roller coaster. And a lot of people will have uh, pain in this life of, of various types. I mean, we all seem to suffer uh, in different ways, you know, as the Buddhist, uh, as the Buddha would say, we, we suffer physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. There are many ways we suffer. And then we be, can become liberated, they would say, by understanding the cause and effect of, 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 of that, that our, our, our life has consequence. You know, not only our, our deeds, but our thoughts all have consequence. And then become so evolved that we become, that we do not have to reincarnate. But I think for the average person, it is, it is a destiny that we will come back again and again and again and again. And, and it probably never ends. It's like a carousel. You never get off. You know, it just keeps on going and keeps on going. And you'll die. You'll come back. You'll die. You'll come back. You'll die. You'll come back countless times, countless times. And, well, why don't we remember? I mean, it is with such pain that we die. In, in, in the previous life. Lastly, we become ill as we become old or, 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 or injured, and then we die. And then that's painful. And, and then there's all kinds of memories that surface, or, or, or as we would say today, emotional baggage. So it's almost a blessing that people don't remember past lives. Yeah, I was going to say, I think in the Emerald, I think it's in the Emerald Tablets of Thoth where he yeah. talks at a certain point. I mean, there, there's a lot of tablets. He talks at yeah. some point about how you can kind of remember from life to life, or at least he would. At least that's what he says he would do. And I don't know if some highly sophisticated person wrote those or if it was actually Thoth himself, but there's a lot of wisdom in those tablets. I'll, I'll tell well, you that. And I'm really glad you brought that up, Rob, because everybody should get this little book, the Emerald Tablets. It is profound. It is Egyptian magic that continues to have significance today and has been so influential throughout time with so many people. Yeah. Do, do you think that do you think that was actually Thoth who wrote those or do you think it was like a I mean, I guess it doesn't matter because it's the wisdom that's in it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thoth or the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, who, who's to say, you know, who's to say, who, who wrote any of these? These ancient documents are, are ascribed to different people. And, and uh, very often they were probably written by um, an anonymous source or someone who did not want to take credit for it. Um, it. It is true that we don't really know the identity of the author, although it's said to be by Thoth. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So can you tell us like, like what, well, give your, your readers an idea of like what if they get this, the past life scrolls, which are awesome, by the way, I can't wait to open this up. Like I'm holding it up again so the audience can see it. Like what can they expect to, to, uh, to get from this besides what I've already read? Like, or, well, or yeah, yeah. It, so it's an overview. It's an overview. And because I have kind of a, a journalistic background, I try not to put my thumb on the scale too much. <laughs> that is to say, it's 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 somewhat objective. You know, it it looks at various cultures, various beliefs, and 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 examines them. You know, um, and and because we've inherited this kind of thinking, and it's all come forward. You know, and so this would this is what we wanted to do with the ancient wisdom scrolls was to have an overview of the ancient esoteric knowledge or mystic knowledge of these subject matters, you know, and, and we've, we've got eight of these coming out. There's a, another one hot on its trail called Lucid Dreams. And then we'll have two more next, uh, next uh, spring. Uh, they'll be called Magical Systems and Energy Healing. And then we'll have four more coming out the next year and a half. And, and the, all of these are like they're condensed books, right? So we wanted them to be quick reads, but an overview, an objective overview of a subject. And so I'm not trying to convince anybody of a certain kind of reincarnation. I mean, I have my views and you probably do too, but I, I think that it's important that we look at all of these traditions because 
what happens and why why did we do a scroll i mean i can't tell you how the, why the publisher did a scroll i think he's just was clever but i i wanted to do the scrolls because i think that we go from time to time in this in this world of ours through dark ages and the information is lost the ancient wisdom tradition is lost it's happened time and again you know the 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 babylonian tablets you know were, were dug up you know why did they bury them you know it, it, the in 1955 they found the nag hammadi library a real treasure trove of esoteric thinking and and th those were put into clay pots and, and buried and then then in the, in also in the 1950s they found the uh, the Coptic uh, text, the um, Dead Sea Scrolls, you know, very very interesting, you know, interesting documents. And 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 you know, you look at like the Alexandrian Library and all of the great books that were lost in this horrific fire, you know. And then we go through these dark ages where these these documents almost have to be hidden because they're. Um, uh, well, they're, they're threatening to some people. I mean, we see this today, don't we? We see this today, even in our, our culture. There is a tendency to want to ban books or burn books or, or withhold information from people. The people are allowed to, you know, freely explore um, and, and, and read and, and study. Uh, and d different information seems threatening to them. So, so there seems to be like a tendency to want to have one way you know this is it this is the way you know and there can be no other way to look at it well these ancient wisdom scrolls give you an overview of many cultures throughout time and various traditions uh for looking at things which we would call the ancient wisdom uh tradition that's awesome and you're you're doing ones on i heard you say you're going to do ones on magic or, or magical yeah. systems like yeah you've always been um into the uh like the occult arts right because i i know that yeah. you've done shows with um marla uh yeah. she's like a wiccan or yeah. wait she does like which and i love your shows with her like i have to give her a show a shout out i can't remember what it's called but I, every time i'm researching for a show to do with you i yeah. always run into a show that you've done with marla and i can't give you guys enough credit like I just don't think there's enough people looking into the occult arts nowadays. You know, well, yeah, Marla, Marla's show is uh, stirring the cauldron, and and Marla is a good witch, you know, and and and, and um, it, it's just amazing that the subjects that that she comes up with. Um, it's true. Uh, same with you. You know, these these shows are so important as as a way of getting information circulated because there are many of us that are open-minded spiritual seekers. I don't mean religious speak as seekers. I mean spiritual seekers. You know, they understand that the truth is a pathless way, as Krishnamurti said. And not only is truth a pathless way, um, but, but um, it, it, you have to be your own teacher and your own student on this. You have to do your own thinking for yourself. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. I, one of the things I wanted to ask you was, okay, I've had past life regressions done and I've, I've had like five and w here's what I would love to get your opinion on. And, and it doesn't have to be uh, yeah, anything, just speculative is whatever you think. Sure. What do you think differentiates a past life memory from just something that our mind is making up? Do you think it's what uh, resonates with us or what do you, what would you say? Well, you know, a glimpse into the past like that, uh, a recollection of the past is like, is like a, a if it's true, it's it's like a lucid dream. It's very vivid, it's very detailed, it's extremely personal, and it's it's involving. You know, you feel like you're in this picture. You're not just watching a newsreel of something happening. You know, and and you're not just like mulling over. You know, thoughts. Um, or events of the past, or 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 such. You know, they're 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 impactful. They're insightful. They're meaningful and intensely, intensely personal. And moreover, when you have a glimpse into a past life, however you do it, and these can be, be even deja vu moments. You know, it can be a daydream. It can be just a flashback. You know, these are usually 
so stirring that you feel, oh my gosh, that was me. That's the that's the impression you get. That was me, and 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 you you feel like, oh my gosh, I've just I've just witnessed an event in my past life. I mean, that's how you feel, and you have and you have to you have to honor it too. You have to honor it by by acknowledging that it's very likely true. You know. And if it's very, really tr- very likely true, then you can actually set it up to explore again in meditation or or in um, you could set a program, a lucid dream. Um, it's important to explore our past lives. I know that a lot of people go through past life recall, which is very often guided meditation. You know, you can do this yourself. You know, you can program it. Yeah, how do we do that? I mean, I've, I've, I've done it with the guidance of someone, you know, where they've taken me into a trance and like, yep. you know, um, it, it would seem like it would be, I don't know, like, it'd be interesting, though, definitely. What do you, what do you think? Well, yeah, the next book, uh, the next scroll I have is Lucid Dreams. And I'm really onto this topic because I think this is a way, lucid dreaming is a way people can explore their identity, uh, their past life, their future their their human uh, destiny, their life mission, who you truly are, why you're here. These are really important questions. Getting to know yourself is, is something you can do by exploring your past lives. And we can explore our past lives by setting up and or programming a lucid dream. And you can do this, you can do this in a number of ways. Uh, typically you could do it by by programming a um, a uh, uh, a daydream, you know, you know, that would be a waking dream where you're, you're lying on the sofa or something. Or you could, you could meditate, of course, that would work. You, you could actually program uh, a lucid dream to begin uh, the minute you become physically asleep at night, your normal sleep cycle. And what I do is, is I use a combination of um, visualization and post-hypnotic suggestions. So, I think, you know, this is all kind of revealed in lucid dreams. And then next year with uh, Red Red Feather, I'm going to come out with a full-length book on programming lucid dreams. It's really, really important that people begin to do what the ancients have always called dream work. Because dream work goes all back to like, whoa, Egypt, you know. Dream work is really, really important to understand um who you are, why you're here, and 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 your life path because it, it, your life path isn't just going to be these these 70, 80, 90 years you're going to live. There it, it goes on and on, you know. It's like you go around the, you go around <laughs> and then you're off the horse, you get off the horse, and then the music starts again and you climb back on the carousel and you go around and around and around and you come to the the end of the circle and you get off and then you get back on it keeps going on and on and you know and- what Ron? i wonder if somebody has to convince us to come back i, I guarantee you they're going to have to try to convince me some angel or some <laughs> spirit guide or something they're they're going to say do, do you want to go back and do this wrong right what you did wrong and i'm going to say you know what i had a hell of a time on earth i don't know if i want to go back i'm not sure if i want to do that over again and they're going to say, yeah, you probably do, right? And they're going to convince me, and I'm going to end up back here. I just hope that I come back, something that's equivalent. I would rather, I'd like to live this life again. And sometimes I wonder about that. Sometimes I wonder yeah. if we've lived parallel lives. Like, And when I say that, I mean, like, that. I've said this before in podcasts, that I feel like I've lived this exact life before. Like, I've sure. done this before. I don't know if that's possible because they say time's not linear. So if in that sense, it could we could be living – these, we could have lived this life before. We never know, right? But see, but see, that's the way karma works, is you keep getting the same opportunities put in front of you uh, again and again and again, because this is, this, these are, this is who you are. You know, this is your mission. This, this is, and, and, and my own guess, if you want me to guess, is that we're all self-programmed. You know, I, I think when this is all over, where you're going to sit down in a corner, probably with some friends, and you're going to be a little specks of light and you're going to like say, well, that was interesting. Say, well, where do you think you missed the mark and where do you think you were effective? And say, well, I think I kind of lost my way. And so then I guess 
what I think is that you're going to be sitting around a table with a, a bunch of people who know you really, really well, and you're going to collectively decide what you do next. In the, in the way synchronicity works, you know, a, a wonderful term coined by none other than Carl Jung, synchronicity is meaningful, meaningful coincidence that the same things keep happening to you, the same opportunities, same challenges, the same confrontations, uh, the same the same scenarios over and over and over because that's what you should be paying attention to. That's who you are. This is your, your everlasting, endless, eternal life mission. Don't know what it is for you. Don't know what it is for me. But brother, I think we have to find out soon. I, I agree. Now I wanted to get into some of these other topics that you covered on the uh, in the book before we open up, before we open it up. Um, one of the things you touch on is near death experiences. How important do you think this is in, in examining past lives? I think it's pretty darn important because um, I think it gives us some insight that past lives are really actually real. I, I think near death experiences are a glimpse into. A big, I mean, besides our own, our own, but sometimes I think if seeing like a, a near death experience of someone else can give us credence to maybe a past life regression that we have, or maybe a lucid dream that we have, because you know, it, it, it gives it some, um, you know, a, a, the near death experiences are very, very, very intriguing. What would, yeah. what would you say? Absolutely. And, and there's just a big body of evidence now, a lot of case studies, careful case studies by psychologists and even medical doctors and, and therapists. And uh, one of the significant uh, body of work comes from uh, Dr. Raymond Moody. And, and Ray Moody is famous for his book, Life After Life. Now, he started out wanting to study the, the near-death experience. He didn't, he didn't necessarily believe in or think much about you know, reincarnation. But he thought it was fascinating how people would have these very similar experiences with the near death, and then they come back. And over time, he started to see a pattern, and he became a real believer in, in, in past lives and reincarnation as a result of what he heard from people that were dead, and then they came back to life. It's kind of like, you know, they, they went on the ship, you know, they met the captain, and then they came ashore. And they said, well, it was, it's pretty wild on that ship. You know, it's, so there have been a lot of other people that have studied it. And one of the ones I looked at was um, a woman in the UK, Dr. Penny Sartori. And she was a um, extended case nurse. She, she did uh, intensive care. And uh, she did it for like 20 years. And she, she studied how these people would have a near-death experience and then they would come back and they'd have a story of, 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 of a life after death. And, and she said that what, what really seemed to be a common denominator was there was no parallel to the people's philosophical or religious orientation as to what they experienced. They all had a similar experience. And, and she absolutely believes that then in past lives and future lives. And her book is it's something worth reading called Wisdom of the Near-Death Experience. Yeah, I think um, the near-death experience is extremely important to study. Yeah, one guy who I always uh, I always looked into, and I've seen him on shows recently, but uh, he was really on Art Bell and George Norrie back in the day. His, na his name was uh, Dr. Bruce Goldberg. You remember well, him? He did I, I knew I knew and worked with Dr. Bruce Goldberg, the dentist. Yep, yep. He had uh, you know like um, a lot of experience working with uh, people who uh, seemed to remember past lives. Yeah, and then he took he would take people into future lives too, just like you said. Like he yeah. he started doing that, and uh, I mean, do you think there's something to that that like we can actually tap into our future lives too? Well, I, I absolutely do, and and I think that um, I mean, my greatest interest is in, I guess, time, really, and I've you know written on time travel. I think that you know you can explore your past, you can explore your future, right here and now, you know. 
and and you can do it especially in like meditation you can do it in like uh, programming lucid dreams people have spontaneous lucid dreams people have daydreams and i think the thing about that meditation dreaming is that these are out of body experiences really and and it it is it's an example of your spirit who, that which leaves your body that is as as a result your consciousness leaving leaving the body is not subjected such subjected to the normal laws of, of physics in short when your consciousness leaves your body in this fashion it it, it is timeless and 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 it can, it can move freely throughout space and time and it can move freely into the past it can move into the future it can even move into uh, alternate realities and parallel worlds that's that's fascinating i you know i'd love to be able to tap into that like i you know like i've done past life regressions and i feel like they've been like 50 50 i don't know like I, you know i i think i have to be more open-minded and i am open-minded i just tend to be a little bit skeptical i think we need to be a little bit skeptical though and look into this stuff but i'm not closed-minded to it i'm just a little bit skeptical that's all i'm saying have you ever gotten that way and what do you think oh yeah it, i mean it, it's good to to be a little bit skeptical you know um yeah. but you know there have been a lot of documented cases of reincarnation and I think the best book that anybody could could read if they're really curious about, you know, past life case study is the book by Ian Stevenson called Children Who Remember Previous Lives. Because if he found that there were a lot of children who 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 already remembered previous lives and they were not indoctrinated into believing in reincarnation. They just simply were born with a memory of previous lives. And that would seem to be, you know, um, a telltale thing. I mean, other books you could read are Tom Schroeder's Old Souls or Tom Rucker's book, Life Before Life. And these are all wonderful uh, documented case studies of reincarnation. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to get into that you that you cover in the book, in the scrolls, is um, shamanic yoga and meditation. Now, I think these are really important for when we look into past life, because I think both of these can open up past life memories, correct? Yeah, yeah. So in the shamanic tradition, uh, just to re remind people, you have the shaman who, who uh, as a service to the community, will go into a deep trance as a spirit walker or dream walker. It will go and, and speak with the, with the grandfathers who will go into the past and they'll speak to them. And then we'll also go into the future and see what the future holds for his people. And so, but, but that, but that's not all of it. You see, there's also the example of the vision quest where this knowledge is taught to uh, people in the um, shamanic, culture the tribe so that everyone has the experience everyone has the experience to explore in this fashion in a, in a personal vision quest yeah that's that's all yeah that's interesting um oh, one thing i wanted to ask you uh i thought was a good question i heard you on another podcast that you did was um do you think sometimes when we evoke daydreams of past lives or, or how do i say do you think sometimes we evoke daydreams of past lives to cope with problems in this life oh this life well um I suppose so. I mean, it, 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 it all, it all relates. Right. So I think that if, if you, how's this is an answer. I think that if you understand your past lives or a past life, it helps you to understand why you're here. And, and, and that's important because I mean, the big questions everybody has is uh, what, what am I doing with my life? Right. <laughs> you know, and it's like, um, should am i doing what i should be doing you know and who am i really you know and how do i fit in this big picture you know, the big cosmic picture these are really big questions and so to understand that you have to understand the continuity you know um you have to understand how you started off 
and what were your uh, what were your goals? What were what was your mission? You know, and 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 what problems and what experiences did you have in the past? Because they're going to come up. I mean, they're definitely going to come up again. The same situations are going to keep coming up because we're all imprinted with a, probably a pre-programmed idea of what we should be doing here. We're all driven to do something. But having said that, every one of us contributes to the collective consciousness. I mean, we are, after all, human consciousness, although not often realized, but inwardly we're, we're pure energy consciousness, that is to say our spirit. And, and, and as such, we are, we are part of universal consciousness or cosmic consciousness. And, and I think it's important that every one of us then uh, experiences something unique and then brings it for, forward for the, for the universal consciousness. I mean, you think about Carl Jung and he talked about the collective unconscious. We all contribute to the collective unconscious. And we're probably all part of one great cosmic consciousness. Yeah. One one more question I wanted to ask you, and then we're going to open up. I'm going to open up the scroll. Is uh, do you feel like there's a difference between an out of body experience and a lucid dream? Because I really feel like there is. I feel like because I've gotten close to having an out of body experience, and I I felt like I've even popped out of body once but then i've also had lucid dreams where i'm in a dream and i'm controlling it but the the, the thing where it gets gray is you know people say we astral travel when we dream every night so it's almost like there's like this gray area that these two worlds can combine where almost like an out-of-body experience is a lucid dream do you know what i'm trying to say or, or what are your thoughts on that well i i I don't know if this is the, the answer you're looking for, but I think it's the difference between uh, flicking on audio only, <laughs> you know, because if you, you, you can actually, and this is true of remote viewing, you could actually project your consciousness out of body and, and, and roam in that fashion, you know, and that could be a lucid dream. That could be remote viewing. It could be many things. It could be an out of body experience only by your consciousness and, and, and you will not have full, you will not have the full experience of, of having uh, gone out of body with more of your subtle energy bodies and than, 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 than simply projecting your consciousness because your consciousness exists. Remember your consciousness exists on every subtle energy body that you possess. Uh, a, a book I would like everyone to consider reading is a book by Dora Van Gelder Kuntz and Dr. Safika Karagula. And uh, Safika Karagula is the, the aunt of George Nuri. So George and I love this book, right? So, so this is called um, the, the Aura and the Human Energy Field. And the point of this book is that your consciousness exists on every subtle energy body level. So you, if you look at the Eastern science uh, um, model of Hinduism, for instance, you, you, you would see that, you know, there's the physical body, there's the emotional body, there's the mental body, there's the causal body, there's the buddhic body. You have your higher spiritual bodies, you know, all the way to the Atma. So there's like seven levels of, of our being. There are seven primary um, uh, energies. And now these, these relate to, these relate to um, seven planes of existence. So that is to say that there's a mental plane of existence and that you have a subtle energy body. So, I mean, if you wanted to explore the, the, the mental plane you would need your 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 the con you would need to project your consciousness of the mental plane of your of your mental subtle energy body outward so what i'm saying is that you need to bring more of you to the adventure yeah is, that, it, that makes sense very typically people will talk about having astral projection where they're simply just sending their consciousness out. This is just in now. This is mental. 
this is sending your mental energy out. You know, you're sending your mental energy out, but you're not sending your emotional body out. Now, now there's some amazing books like, like um, uh, written by um, Alice Bailey on, on what is, what is magic, you know, uh, treatise of white magic, you know, and it's like, we, we forget that the emotional body, you know, travels with the mental body and goes out your causal body. I wouldn't want to go a lot of places without my causal body. So what I'm saying is you have to reach um, a level of harmonic agreement within you, yourself. Uh, that is to say, holistically, you're agreeing that you're going to send out as much as you, you as you can out of body. Now, this can be done in a lucid dream. It can be done in meditation. It could be done in many ways. You know, it could be done in, in a, a spiritual soul retrieval. You know, any out-of-body experience should be more than simply projecting your mental consciousness. And yet that's what, what many, many people do. You bring up a really good point. That, that's, that's interesting. Did you ever hear those stories of people who can um, become like the eagle or become like they'll, they'll project their consciousness and they can project it through the eyes of an eagle and see what an eagle would see? Or uh, have you ever heard of that? I've heard that before. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 and absolutely this is possible. I know firsthand this is possible. You can do this. You can actually put your consciousness into a tree, into a deer, into anything. You can actually project your whole self somewhere, but you can't do this if you're going to simply project your mental consciousness. You have to bring everything with you. You have a full arsenal of intelligent um, energy, and, and this is the consciousness that sits on, on, on seven layers of your being, holistically speaking, your whole self, top to bottom. That's so interesting. This, well, this has been fascinating. Well, I'm not. I'm going to open this up now. I'm. Gonna, uh, I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to show the camera again. So, guys, again, this is. Uh, this has been Bron Brashor, and and he's going to get. I'm going to. He's going to talk at the end. We're going to. We're going to go through this right now. These are the past ledge scrolls. I'm going to. I'm so excited to open this. I. I bought this maybe two three weeks ago, and I didn't know. I wanted to open it because I wanted to read it because all of the stuff that we just talked about today is in there plus a lot more, but. It's so nice that you almost will want to keep it as like a keepsake, like you'll want it as like a as a collector's item, because it, it, this definitely I could see this definitely being a collector's item. Like I'd love to get one of these signed from you, Vaughn. But here we go. I'm gonna put the camera down. Let me see if I can put the camera down a little bit so people can see better what I'm doing. And uh, let me just you know, use the scissors here to open these up. This is plastic. And let me see if I can get it in the camera. Oh wait, I got. I think I gotta cut it here a little bit more. Okay, there we go. And uh, I'm going to be delicate with it. I don't want to mess it up. So once you, seems like once you take it, oh, this is nice. There's a, it flips open at the top. The box flips open at the top, everyone. And then you take this little piece out right here. And, oh, there's, there's a little uh, thing in here, like a fortune cookie. Look at this. If you guys can see that, I'll look in the camera. So as soon as you take the top piece out, there's a little piece in there, like a fortune cookie, and it says, your ancient wisdom scroll reads from left to right. Use the attached clip to hold your place between readings. When finished, roll both sides equally. Enjoy the journey. So uh, you'll have to maybe tell me that again, Vaughn, because I'm not the smartest cookie. So let me see here. I mean, sometimes I lack common sense is what I'm trying to say. Oh, and this is tied in the bow. Let me see. Okay, so I undid the bow. So now do I just pull this apart, Vaughn? Yeah, yeah. So, so you have in your left hand with the scroll – and then the, in the other hand, you're going to be feeding it into the receiving scroll. So you just you just keep uh, you just hold it in both hands and keep and keep uh, uh, moving it left to right, left to right, left to right. And, and it's nice and easy to read. We tried to get paper that looked like parchment. We tried to get type display type that looks like uh, it could be like silver type or gold type. They're, they're, I mean, I'm just looking through the chapters in here. Wow, this is amazing. I don't want to, I don't want to mess this up. So it goes left to right. So I'm going to roll this up. You have the, about the Egyptian Book of the Dead, Letters from the Dying, Preparing for Rebirth in the Tibetan Book of the Dead, 
Um, I was always scared of the Tibetan Book of the Dead. I had that, uh, and I don't think I was ready for it yet because I got it when I first well, woke, and I was like kind of – it really freaked me out because at that point in time, I wasn't ready to like face my own death. But now, now I realize that death is only another – aspect of this life that we all have to go through and i'm gonna have to go through it so i figured like yeah. you know it's just a part of life you know so i mean yeah. we can't none of us can escape it right so it's it's kind of cool to when i get to sit here and talk to people like yourself about it you know you know and we've kind of ad adopted some of the strategy of, of working your way through the the intermediate uh, state states of consciousness uh before your physical death I and mean, we call this conscious dying and they're, and they're practicing this now in hospice play centers. So conscious dying is, first of all, becoming conscious of, of, of life and then conscious of death and, 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 and reviewing your life. And, and the idea is that your consciousness will become part of universal consciousness when you die. And you're ready. You're ready to unite with, with the, the cosmos. Yeah. And, most, and, people, uh, most people feel so so alone in our society so alienated and we feel so individual you know that's the big thing everybody's an individual but we're all going to go through this together we're all going to come out just fine at the other end well there's a lot of information in here just guys so you can see i've been rolling this for a long time this is what it looks like i'm putting it in the camera just to give an idea, it's two scrolls, and I've been rolling left to right. So when you first unroll it, you'll be in the middle of the book. So you want to unroll uh, – wait, how did I do that? You want to unroll to your left. You want to roll up. You want to roll up the right side so you get to the left side. That will yeah. be the beginning of your book, and the page numbers are numbered at the bottom. Yeah, and, see, and just like, yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Ron. Yeah, yeah, so you see the page numbers are numbered, so you always know where you are. And so you, you, you scroll back to the beginning – and then you just keep feeding it, you know, and, and going left to right, left to right. And the in, the uh, in the uh, the the scroll on your on your right hand will be the intake. And you'll keep feeding it. At, you'll you'll that you know. So yeah, it's it's a two-handed approach, just like holding a book. Yeah, and what I love that I love some of the stuff you have stuff about Krishmanarti in here, who is yeah. an Indian sage. You have deja vu. I mean, this is something that people have to get. I think this is a must must read. Like um, uh, self program lucid dreaming, like kind of like what we talked about today. Yeah. But um, why did you decide to put um, Krishmanarti in here? Well, like, what? well, you know, he, he he well for a couple of reasons. I think one was they asked him whether reincarnation uh, was real. That was the question that he always was asked. And finally, he turned around and said, reincarnation is an untrue fact. And he just stunned him. He said, it's an untrue fact. He says, um, he said, the truth is, you're reincarnated every moment of your life. Change is constant. He says, it, life is a process. It goes on and on and on without end. He said, consider that every, like, Every seven days, I think it is you, you, your, all of your blood is renewed. Every month, every cell in your body, your body is renewed. We're not the same people you or I, Rob. When we started having this little conversation, we're different. We're constantly going through change. And he, his point was that people get so hung up on starts and end endings that they forget to live life in the middle, and that really you can reincarnate yourself every moment of your life i like that i like that 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 makes that's really cool it's like kind of like you can you can start over anytime you want we always yeah. have a we always have a, a we can always start a fresh beginning in this life even though you know times get tough one another one other thing i wanted to ask you before we finish up is um deja vu what are your thoughts on deja vu because this is another thing that led me to believe that maybe i've lived this life before or something close to it because we have these deja vu moments and we feel like we've done them before. Now this could also get into parallel realities. Like the, oh, there's, there's vis different versions of ourself living somewhere else, experiencing something similar to this, that like our consciousness is split into two other places and stuff like that. What, what do you feel about any of that? I, I think that deja vu moments are, are, are little glimpses into the fact that we have lived a previous life. 
I mean, the, 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 the real test of a deja vu moment is, is whether the, the, the event that you seem to be experiencing and you can't, you can't um, pinpoint, you know, how this all came to be, is, is it possible that it's some memory, you know, but, you know, let's look at some deja vu experiences. You meet somebody and say, I've met you before. This can't be. And so then you sit down and you, you explore, well, where do you go to school? where do you grow up? Who do you know? You know, do you, do you go to a lot of, you know, games, you know, is it, you go to the movies, where do you eat? And maybe I've run into you, you know, it's like, where do you, where, have you been on TV? You know, did I see you in a magazine? You know, did I meet you on vacation somewhere? Where did you live? You know, and it's like if there's nothing in either in your experience where where you can you can actually remember having known this information in this lifetime, then the only explanation is that it's come from a previous lifetime or another lifetime. And then yeah. the then there's the deja vu experience, you know. It's like, oh, I've experienced this whole thing before, and it's like this is the experience where someone says something, and you just know what they're going to say next. You know, this is all this playing out before you've seen it before. You know, it's like, how can this be? So once again, you go back into your 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 physical brain and say, how could I have these memories? Is this part of 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 memory of this previous of this present life? And if you cannot reasonably figure out how you could possibly have this this knowledge, because really, I mean, there's just there's just the um, re the recorded moments of ha of the life you've lived here physically in this life. Well, then it has to come from a previous life or another life, right? So then there's also like um, um, you you go to a place, you know, the deja vu. Uh, uh, you, uh, scenario where you go to a place and say oh my gosh i've been in this building before or i've been in this city before i mean to me it was i went to wales and i said i know exactly everything in this building and 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 and, and i could see the people that used to live here you know it was just astounding you know and it, it, it could only only have come from a previous life because i'd never been there before I'd never seen a documentary about that building, you know, which which was ruins when I saw it. Uh, I mean, there's just no ex there's no way to explain it. So people seem to be born with some previous glimpses of, of, of memory to a past life. And that's that's a very internal thing. That's not a, a brain function. You know, it, it is it is something in, deep in your spirit that, that comes with you as consciousness returns life after life and and, and one, the one thing that we didn't cover the last thing that the last question i have for you and, I, and this is totally up for speculation whatever you think i mean i realized that a lot of the topics we, we're going to cover we have to speculate on so that's perfectly yeah. fine but like what i wanted to say was why do you think we have the veil of forgetfulness like is it because kind of like earth's a game and like we're here to learn lessons and if we remember our past lives then maybe we wouldn't learn our lessons. I mean, I've heard that. I mean, and that kind of resonates with me, but then at the same time, I was like, well, I wish I had these past life memories because then I would know not to make these mistakes because, yeah. you know, obviously I'm coming back to this life and I'm making similar mistakes over and over again. So I almost wish that I had my past life memories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, like, it's well, like, well, it's, well, it's painful. I, I think that I think that we don't want to be born with that much emotional baggage. You know, we don't want to have to remember all these things that have happened because they weren't all pleasant. But, you know, you know, it's like and, and, and I know people have experienced synchronicity in their in their in their particular lives today where things keep, keep resurfacing, you know, usually in threes. And you say, well, gosh, this happened before, you know, slightly different, maybe or maybe exactly the same, usually slightly different. And then it happens again, and it's like it's trying to get your attention, and 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 I think that I think that there's a pattern to our lives that continues life after life. Did that, did that answer the question? Or 
Yeah, yeah, that does. And then what I was, what else I wanted to say real quick was that that, that there's those kids who uh, they do, like you said, that people have written books about them. Those kids yeah. that like all of a sudden, like a four year old kid that's born in our time, like today, yeah. will remember that he was a pilot on a World War. He was like a yeah. a bomber pilot in World War Two, and he'll remember his name, facts about the plane he flew, where yeah. he was stationed, these bombing raids. Oh, I don't know if it gets that detailed, but you know what I mean? It gets pretty detailed. And like, it, yeah. these are like shocking accounts, you know? Oh yeah. 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 They, they, they just, they just, it's just there. And and I think that maybe, maybe children uh, have more of these experiences than we think they do. And then we just gradually forget them as time goes on. I, I sometimes think that's the case. Well, I think I think what happens is a lot of times what I, from what I've heard, I heard the cutoff age is like four years old because what happens is they have the memories up until they're like three or four years old. Then yep. they start getting indoctrinated with like their parents values and society and things that they're being taught in this life. So the, those memories start to fade. Would you would you buy into that or what do you think? Well, yeah, when I was in first grade, I remembered uh, where I where I had come from before this lifetime. I didn't remember great details, but I knew that I, 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 I wasn't from here. I was from somewhere else. And as time went on, I, I, I couldn't remember any of that, you know, and it's like, um, I, I, I think, I think that, um, I think that's exactly the case. Yeah, being, being, that, being that you're a, a writer, that you're such a prolific writer in this life, do you feel that you might have been a scribe or a historian or teacher in previous lives? Well, yeah, uh, that's true. And uh, I think that's true. And um, I know that I was a writer in a previous life. Yeah. That'd be interesting to see if you could find out if I, because I could picture you being like a, like a, like an ancient scribe or like, you know, someone like Plato, like that brought, brought the information forward. Cause that's kind of what you're doing in this life, you know? You still there? Yeah. Oh. I had to, had to set the alarm for tomorrow morning, but my, my new alarm doesn't know AM from PM. It's just all the same. So, oh. yeah. so I do have memory of, of having been a, a, a scribe in a previous life. Um, and, um, you know, sometimes I, I feel an identity with that person because I, I was that person. But, but you know, we're, we're always going through constant change. The one thing we can always say, we can see it in, even in, 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 in our daily lives. The world is in constant change and we're in constant change and everything is evolving. Yeah, that makes, I, I think that's a good place for us to uh, finish up for today. And uh, you know what, this has been fascinating. I can't wait to put this out tomorrow. I'm going to upload it tonight. So, and then like I'll set it to premiere tomorrow. So the fans get time to see it. And then um, I'll probably premiere it like somewhere around seven or 8 PM tomorrow. Um, so I'll send you a link when I upload it. Do you want to Thank tell you. everybody, Thank you, Vaughn. And do you want to tell everybody where to uh, find the book, find the scrolls, find the book, and uh, and and everything else? Yeah, I know that it's uploaded at uh, Amazon, um, and it's on uh, Barnes and Noble uh, in the bookstore and Barnes and Noble online. And uh, so you know they've 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 made it available online in places where people normally find find books online. It's also in bookstores and. Um, and they're actually going to uh, put it in different places like game stores and and uh, gift stores and I don't know, strange places like that. <laughs> Magic yeah, shops. That, I don't know. <laughs> that, that's, yeah, that's cool. I, I hope I end up seeing it somewhere. Like, um, And um, once again, I'll, I'll hold this up. This is the box again, people, for... And uh, hopefully I can get a screenshot of that and I can use that as the thumbnail. Well, I use the one with the scroll in it as a thumbnail, but that's it. The past life scrolls and, uh, and, and thank you, Vaughn. This has been amazing. Thank you. All, All right. right. And then 